Hello, and welcome to the Infra OS Application Designer Series. In today's video, I will define exactly what is context messaging within OAD and the different types of context messages. I will walk you through a demo of how to set up custom messages, as well as how to set up a widget to receive an Infra Business Context message. What exactly are context messages and how can they be used? Context messages provide users with contextually relevant information within an application. These messages can be used for widget-to-widget -widget communications or for application-to-widget interactions. Within OAD, there are two types of messages that can be defined, custom context messages and in-for-business context messages. Custom messages can be sent or received by widgets, and these allow for widgets to interact with one another. A simple example of this would be a customer listing widget sending the customer number as a context message to another widget, allowing it to filter the orders based on the customer number that was received. The second type is an in for business context message. These types of messages can be received by a widget which allows widgets to interact with data from a separate application. These types of messages are intended to be used by widgets residing in the smart panel. A simple example of this is a user selecting on a customer in M3. An in for business context message is sent containing the customer number, and in return the customer sales widget in the smart panel will filter based off that customer number that was received. Context messages can be managed in the context messages view from the navigation bar. In this page, you can view, edit, or delete existing context messages. Additionally, you can use this view to launch the context messaging wizard, which will allow you to create a new context message. The context messaging wizard will step the user through the process of building a context message. In this wizard, you can define the name and description, the message type, the message schema, as well as the message parameters. Now that we have covered the basics on context messaging, let me walk you through a demo on how to build a custom context message. Starting in Portal, I have an existing workspace that contains two widgets. One is a simple customer listing widget, and the other is a customer orders widget. Currently, these two widgets are independent and do not interact with one another. I want to create a context message that will send the customer number from the customer listing widget to the orders widget so it can filter by the customer that was selected. To do this, I'm going to switch over to App Designer from the OS landing page and select the context messages page from the navigation menu on the left. Here you can see a list of all the existing context messages. We want to create a new message, so let's select the New Context Message button from the top right corner. Let's give it a name and description and click Next. Here I can select the type, and in this example, we are going to use a custom context message. In Step 3, we can define the message schema. Give it a unique name and define any properties you want to include in your schema. Here you can include multiple properties, however, for this example we only want to send the customer number. Click the Add New Body property to add the property to the context message object. Once it has been added, you can see a preview of the object on the right. In Step 4, you can define the parameters you want to include from the message object. Click the Add Parameter button and select the properties you want as parameters and click Add. In Step 5, you can see a summary of your context message, as well as the parameters and structure of the message. Once you are satisfied, you can click Finish to create the message. Now that our message has been created, we can now add it to the widgets. First, we want to send the customer number from the customer listing widget. I am going to open up the widget designer for my existing widget. Once the designer has opened, I can expand the context message menu item on the left and select the sending button. This will open the context message dialog where I can select the context message we created from the dropdown. I can also click the note icon on the right to view additional details on the message such as the structure and the parameters. Once I have my message selected, I need to specify below what data field I want to send in the customer number parameter. This dropdown will populate with a list of output parameters that were defined on the selected data service. I am going to select the customer number data field and click Save. In this example, I am only sending one parameter. However, the ability to send multiple parameters is supported. Now that the message has been added, I can click Finish. Now that the sending widget has been set up, we now need to set up the receiving widget. I will edit my existing customer orders widget. Once the editor loads, I will expand the context message section, and this time I will select the receiving button. From the context message modal, select the message that was created earlier. Again, we will need to specify what data field we want as an input to this data service. In this dropdown, you will see a list of input parameters that are available on your selected data service. 
To illustrate what I mean, I will quickly hop over to the data service that I am using. You can clearly see here that I have one input parameter defined on this data service. I want my data service to receive the customer number from the first widget and use it to filter the data on the second widget. So now I will select the same customer number input field to receive the message. After that, we can save and finish. Both the sending and receiving widgets have now been fully set up, and I will go ahead and republish and redeploy my widgets into my workspace. Now if I refresh my workspace, you can see when I change the customer now on my customer listing widget, that the customer orders will now filter based off the customer number that was being sent in the context message. Lastly, you can add the context viewer widget to a workspace, and it will allow the user to preview any messages that are being sent. This can be particularly useful when a user is developing multiple widgets with multiple messages being sent at once. In this next demo, let's walk through how to set up a widget to receive an InfoBusiness context message from an application. As you can see here, I have an M3 customer screen with a customer sales widget in the Smart Panel. I want my widget in the Smart Panel to update with customer sales data every time I switch customer records. I can utilize the InfoBusiness context message that is being sent from M3 to filter based off customer ID. As you can see in the context viewer, every time I select a new record, the message will update with the new customer ID. We will need this message when creating our InfoBusiness context message in OAD. I am going to go ahead and copy the contents of the context viewer to my clipboard. Next, I will switch over to OAD and will open the context messages view. Let's add a message by clicking the new context message button. First, give the message a name and description, then select in for business context as the message type. On step three, we can define the message body, paste in the context message you copied earlier into the context message body field, then click the validate JSON button at the bottom to validate that the JSON schema is correct. If the schema is valid, you will see a preview of the object on the right. On step four, we can define the parameters we want to use from the schema. Click the Add Parameter button and select the ID1 field, where the Customer Number field is contained. Click the Add button to add the parameter. Here you have the ability to add multiple parameters from the schema. However, for this example, we are just going to add the one. You also have the ability to give the parameter an alias to help make it more readable. I am going to keep the default and click Next to see a quick summary of my message. I will click Finish to create the message, and now we are ready to add this to our receiving widget. I am going to open up my existing widget in the designer and expand the context message section on the left. I will click the receiving button to open up the context message modal. Here I will select the message we just created in the dropdown. Now I need to specify what data field from the data service I want to receive the message. If I quickly hop over to my data service that is attached to this widget, you can see I have four input parameters to choose from. I want to receive this message as a filter on customer ID so let's select the filter data field to populate that customer ID value. Click save and finish. And now we are ready to republish and redeploy our widget. Once that has been done, I will switch back over to M3 and do a refresh. Now you can see anytime I switch customers in M3, the widget on the right will read that in for business context message and will filter by customer ID to show relevant customer data. This concludes today's demo. I hope that after this, you have a better understanding of how you can leverage context messaging in OAD to create a more robust user experience. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the Infor YouTube channel for future videos. Thanks for watching.